Hello everyone, my name is Anna, I'm from Sober Lab, and yes, I'm still in this room, soon I will be back, okay, for my live room, but now let's do it what we can do, or wait and don't post video, but uh, I like to post, so doesn't matter. In this video, I'll answer the question for one of the subscribe. First thing that he asked, Alan, I have two servers in my house, one that have a, a big raw capacity, but the other one have a low capacity but have a better processor power and I want to have all my data in one server and stream the videos and stream everything in another one for two reasons first of all I don't want to invest in more hard drives and I don't want to destroy the pool for that first server and the second reason I want to have all my data in local network and I don't want to have any port open directly for this server and then, how can you help me with this? And I say, yes, it's quite easy, we can do it. And in this video, I will show something that you can do. In this case, we will do with two computers, but you potentially can have lots of different applications. You can have three, four computers. You have one computer, one Raspberry Pi with a few hard drives. You have another Raspberry Pi with others, few hard drives. And you have, and then everything you can mount in one location and only one computer that will be the stream for all the media that you have dividing few systems. So if you like this idea and want to learn a little bit more about it, we're gonna show it. But first of all, don't forget to leave your like, subscribe for the channel, and let's do it. Go. First of all, let me explain a little bit more about the system that I work. I have two systems. First one, it's a Synology NAS, and the second one, it's myself with OpenMediaVal. My Synology NAS that I have all the raw capacity, where I have a large pool of storage, and my open media file have a better processor power and a better GPU. It's not that you don't have GPU, but uh, you understand my idea. I have a better specs to run better Plex or AMB, but uh, I have a large capacity in my Synology NAS. So what I did? First of all, I habilitate my FTP option. If you have OpenMediaVal, you're gonna do the FTP option for OpenMediaVal. If you're doing TrueNAS, you can do the TrueNAS option and any other system will have similar way to habilitate the FTP. In this case, I will habilitate my FTP and I put no encrypted because will be only local access. And in this local access, they will have the port 21. I could change, yes, I could change for any port. But because it's only used local, for me it doesn't matter, no one will have access externally for this port. And I will not allow that any application have port forwarding for this server. I have this one in mind, I need to create my user to have access for my specific folder. To do it, I create my user called Sauberlab, and this user Sauberlab have an option to use the follow application, FTP. You need to allow it. If you go to open media file, it's the same thing you need to allow that user have access for that specific file and I, and I add it. So have this one in mind. I come here in my open media file and I go to explain what I need to do here. My open media file is a little bit better. I have 16 gigabytes of RAM and I have a E5 4590 as a CPU. So we work a little bit better than my Synology NAS. In my OpenMediaVal server, I have my file system. And in this file system, I have one hard drive of four terabytes, another hard drive of two terabytes where I have all my transmission, where I run all the downloads and all the applications here. I have two SSDs. One of those, it's only for the operating system. Another one that I have my Docker application installed. In this Docker application style, I keep my cache. Not necessarily you need to have a cache when you're running in the network and if you have a stable connection between the both uh, compute. If you have 10 GPPS connection between these two servers, you not have problem at all. If you have one GPS, you don't have, depend what kind of media that you're gonna transmit. If you have uh, 100 megabytes, yes, you're gonna have problem, but nowadays no one use 100 megabytes anymore as a server. So I think that uh, it's safe. I have this one in mind, now we're gonna look the files that I want to share between the two servers. I come here and I get uh, this Samba. 
Here in this server called Alpha, I have a folder called Arclone and G Drive, and this one I have all my media. My media is defined between animes, books, cartoons, home videos, movies, blah, 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 blah. If I open the properties of my data, I have uh, 58 terabytes of media. And definitely I cannot put these 58 terabytes in any one of the four terabytes hard drive. So I need to keep separately. And I don't want to have uh, access to the internet for this server, only for protection. Have this one in mind, now we're gonna use the Arclone to configure and access this data through the FTP. How we're gonna do? We need to open our putty. In our FTP, we're gonna start to configure our Arclone. If you don't have Arclone installed yet, don't worry, you have the link here up or link in the description where I post a video how you can install the Arclone. You can follow the first minutes how to install the Arclone, you stop that video, return for this one, and that's uh, you already have Arclone installed. But now we're gonna only show how to do a new connection. To do it, we need to tape Arclone config. Here we already have two remote red configure, don't worry about those. We're gonna need to create a new remote. To do it, we're gonna press N, enter. Then we need to define the name of this remote. We're gonna put FTP. Why? Because I'm using FTP only to be logical for me. And now I need to see which kind of connection. If I come here and scroll up, I see that the type of connection that I want to use is FTP. So here FTP, I come here, tape again, FTP. Now they ask what host that we are using. Because the IP address of that host is 192.168.1.251, I will use exactly the same. It means that it will 192.168.1.251. And now they ask which user that you're using. As I told, I create a user called SauberLab. And they ask which port I define as 21. If you change the FTP for all other port, please update it. Otherwise, you can leave as 21 and enter. They ask, you set a password for this user? Yes, I set a password, so I will put yes. And I tape my password. Test one, two, three, and again, my password again. And now they say, you want to configure all the information, you can leave empty this time. You can only enter, enter. You want to have advanced configuration, no? So you're gonna no, enter. And they say, everything's okay, you have the type of connection, FTP. Host, the IP address of your server the user, the port, and the password that's encrypted. It look like me, otherwise you guys are gonna discover my password. So if everything's okay, we're gonna put yes and enter. Now I have another connection. So we can quit it, clean the page to be a little bit more tight, and now we can check if this connection is working. To do it, we need to tape our clone, ls, and that ftp two dots. If everything's okay, there will appear uh, LS for all the data, so let's stop it. And we know that the folder, it's Arclone G Drive that I want to go. Now we need to think how we're gonna do our mounting point for this drive. To do our mounting point, I'm gonna open in the Word. Why? Because first time that I tried to tape it in my Notepad++, they start to be so long that it was difficult to explain everything in one line. So I opened the Word and they read the split the lines, so it's easy for me. So I'll explain what kind of configuration that I did. First of all, I put Arcloni mount. Why? Because I want to mount the file. Then I use a UMask as a 022, my GID and a UID, it's already the user IDs. In my case will be JD100 and UID1000. Perhaps your server have another ID from your users, so I suggest you to open the putty, and inside the putty you tape ID and the user that you're using. In this way, you can discover what's the ID and JD for your user. But at this point, we're not gonna do it. And now the next string that we're gonna put, it's our allowed orders. Why you need to do it? Otherwise, if you don't do it, they will not allow you for the others application have access for this FTP. And this way you're gonna miss information. So let's leave and say allowed others. And that we leave as a timeout as one hour, pull interval each 10 seconds. You can define less, doesn't matter. And that's a cache time 500 times. Cache then will come the question, it's worth cache or not? Depend. 
If your connection is stable, no, it's not necessary to do it. If you have 10 gigabytes and you're gonna have 1080p medias, no, don't need to do cache. But I like to do at least for have a little bit buffer of information in the server that I'm running. Because the internal memory is a little bit faster than the network that you're gonna have, depend which kind of connection that you have. I define my cache as my home FTP cache. How I define it? I come here in my open media val, in my share folders, and I open my absolute path. If you don't appear absolute path in your case, you can come here and columns and add the option for absolute path. And that's in my case, I want to choose save all my data in the folder called home. This reason I come here, inspection, and define as a home. Inside this folder home, I create another folder called FTP, another one called cache. And then I put drive place minimum sleep 10 milliseconds, drive place bust a, a, a thousand. Then I put the VFS cache mode full. And uh, the maximum size of the cache I put as a 50 gigabytes. Why I put 50 gigabytes? Because all my media, it's the maximum that I can find, it's 50 gigabytes. Either a 4K video, I don't have bigger than 50 gigabytes, so for me it's fine. And then I say that the maximum age of this cache is 5,000 hours. As well, they will read ahead 2 gigabytes. What it means? That the red go ahead will buffer a little bit 2 gigabytes. Then after this one, we need to define what kind of connection that we're gonna do, what remote. As I told, I create remote as a FTP, then I need to put FTP two dots, and here it's the rclone slash G drive. Why is it? If I come here, if you look here, all my data is inside rclone G drive. So I come here and define as rclone G drive, that's fine. And that they give a space, and I want to define where they will mount it. Where the remote will be exactly the same folder as FTP, but in my case, I create another folder called data. Now we can check if it, this folder is working. Before we check, we need to be sure that all the folders that you create, it really exists. So I come here in my FTP file, I have read my folder cache, now I create my folder called media, and I have my two folders here. So then I can try it. To try it, I can copy all this information, come here, my put again, clear this page to be a little bit more tight, this mount, and try to run this mount option. If they stay processing here, it means that uh, should be working, so we can try it. We open again our FTP and come in media, and now I have my data. If I come animes, I have all my animes. If I have my TV shows, I have everything. But they are not physically in this folder mounting, but they are in another server, in another place. So now we know that it's working, but it's complete, no. So if I close my putty, they basically lose the connection for my folder media. What we can do now, we need to do a service or a activity that will run automatically all the time that I need. So to do it, I come here my open media valve again and come and click as a schedule jobs. In schedule job, I will create a new job. I will come add and I will define when I want to add it. I want to add on day he start. All the time that they myself reboot, they will start this activity automatically and everything will gonna be fine. I come here and copy this command line and I come here and paste it. Once that I paste, I can come here and activate send command output if perhaps I configure my email. If I didn't configure my email, it's pointless, you can leave off. We're gonna here and put save. Now we wait to apply this configuration, so there will appear the apply. I say yes. I give some minutes until they finish the configuration. One, once that I finish apply, all the time that I restart my server, they'll do this mount automatically. So all my data, it's mounted automatically. In this way, now we can configure the Plex or the AMP or the Jellyfin to have uh, that folder as a file for data. And in this way, you can have this media in that folder. So in this way, you can have more than one server. You can have a few of those mounting different folders, look like FTP1, FTP2, FTP3, and make a merge FS for all these files have the same 
place and all your media can access it. So you don't need to have everything in one place. You can have in three, four different things and that you will intend for your server that will stream all the media that's only one place. So in this video, I'll explain a little bit more about our clone together with FTP in the way that you can have lots of servers in your house and have one only that is connected for a service outside the network and the rest it's connected directly for this server through the FTP and our clone. If you like this video and think that was useful for you, leave your like. If you didn't like, leave your dislike. Subscribe for the channel and see you next time. Bye.